always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. And welcome to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am not Keith. You may have noticed that right off, that I do not sound like Keith, because I am not Keith. Keith has uh, moved on to other ventures in his life, and we wish him the best of luck. I am the host of some of the other shows. Oh, I'm Sarah, by the way. I have hosted some of the other GSMC Podcast shows uh podcasts excuse me namely the book review one which is one of my favorite things to do is read and interview authors but i've been on a variety of other of the podcasts i don't think i've ever uh hosted or co-hosted the entertainment podcast though so this is exciting to talk about some of the internet entertainment news out there in the world right now hope you're having a great weekend it is um it's going pretty well here in Northern California. Not much to uh, complain about. We've been having some rain, which is lovely, and I've had a good combination of productive and lazy this weekend. So that I feel like is always um, it's always a good way to spend a weekend. You know, you get some stuff done, but you also get some downtime, etc. So I hope that you are having a, whatever your definition of a good weekend is, and things are going well. So. Let's talk about some entertainment news. Uh, babies. I love babies. We met uh, the, the, the daughter of some friends of ours. Um, I think it was last weekend. Yeah, last Saturday. And she's three and a half months old. She's almost four months old. And she is so cute, which is not entertainment news. But I was very entertained by her. But I love babies. I love meeting new babies. I confess that I ogle celebrity babies when I get the chance. Uh, I, I don't necessarily appreciate um, the lengths that can be gone to to get pictures of those babies. But when, you know, the, when pictures are shared by the celebrities of their babies, then I will definitely be a baby ogler. I am also fascinated by the things that um, both celebrities and regular people name their babies. I'm fascinated by the origin stories of names, of why people choose to name their babies, what they do, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, my name in Hebrew, I have learned, I've, I've looked it up and it means princess, which to me is hilarious because I'm not the least princessy person you'll ever meet, but Hey, that's cool. Um, and, but more interesting to me is that I was named after my grandfather's sisters. There were numerous boys in the family, but only two sisters, uh, Sarah and Helen. So now you, now you know my, my two middle, my, my two names, my first and middle name. I never met either Sarah nor Helen, but they were my mom's aunts and I am named after them. So yeah, baby names, names in general fascinate me. I am one of those terribly nosy people who will, ask people where their name came, comes from. And it, it sometimes comes off as rude, like, oh, where does that name come from? But ah, I don't mean it like that. I need to come up with a better phrase. I'm just fascinated by how people choose names, uh, um, why they decide to spell them the way they do, etc. If there's a deeper meaning or if they're just looking for something different, etc. So we have a couple of baby name stories for you in this first segment. The first is the newest royal baby, and that is the uh, newborn son of Harry and Meghan, born just um, not that long ago. Can't remember the exact date because it just flipped out of my head. I do apologize. So they announced that he was born and then a couple days and said that they would be announcing his day, his name a couple days later. So uh, baby Sussex, they did um, bring him and introduce him. He was just, you know, all swaddled up and wearing a little cap so you could barely see any of his face. But, you know, he seems adorable as he seems like a newborn, adorable bundle of adorableness. And they named him Archie Harrison, 
Uh, and then with the uh, hyphenated last name of Mountbatten Windsor, which is what all the royals are going by for a while now. I don't know when that official change was made, but I find the interesting Archie Harrison. Uh, I I want to know. I see. I want to sit down with Harry and Meghan as though I'm ever going to sit down with either of them and you know chat and be like, hey, tell us the origin story of this name. So Archie often is more of a nickname type of a name uh, short for Archibald I guess I mean that's a that's kind of a name to saddle a child with but uh, royal names can often be a mouthful I mean often I'm impressed that he only has two Archie Harrison that they hit doesn't have four or five like often happens um so it does sound like a shortened nickname but that is his name Archie and then Harrison I really want it to be after George Harrison um, I read somewhere else somebody wanted it to be because they're really big uh, Indiana Jones fans or Star Wars fans, and so he's named after Harrison Ford. <laughs> I'm sure there's a valid reason why this baby's middle name is Harrison, and it's probably neither the Beatles nor Harrison Ford. But hey, maybe. What do I know? Um, he met the the Queen and Prince Philip, and there's a very sweet picture of the Queen beaming down at him. Archie Harrison is the seventh in line for the throne, which is fascinating. I mean, royal succession is interesting. You know, uh, Harry used to be second after William, and then William had three babies, so that bumped him down the line to... to uh, Fifth? No, no, it's not. He wasn't second after Harry. He was after William. I, I don't mean second after William, so... Charles would be first, and then William, and then Harry. And then William had three children, and then that bumped Harry down to sixth, and his child down to seventh. I can count, really, yeah. Um, anyway, so they seem very happy. They seem very pleased. Baby and mom are doing great, so that is the main important thing. And Archie Harrison has entered the world, which then made me realize that I had no idea what Pippa Middleton's baby name, baby was, and she had a boy, and his name is Arthur. I had to go look that up because somehow I missed it. Speaking of babies, um, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West have had their fourth baby via surrogate. He was born on May 9th, and he joins siblings North, sister North, uh, brother Saint, sister Chicago, and now he is the fourth. So they have two of each. Um, seems kind of perfect and very well spaced. And his name they just announced recently is Psalm, like the Bible, P-S-A-L-M, Psalm. They definitely have chosen interesting names for their children when they first announced that they call her Nori, which I think is really cute, but Northwest just made a lot of people roll their eyes, and I admit to being one of them. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Northwest. It's funny, but... I don't know if it's funny enough to like to, to make your child go through life like that. But hey, it's not my child, and I'm not going to... Hey, that that's their that's their choice, and they named her that. But then, so North and Saint, and then their daughter Chicago. I think I read somewhere that they call her Shy, uh, which is also cute. Um, Chicago West sounds like a neighborhood. Saint West to me doesn't sound really like anything. But um, here's where you're going to realize you're going to realize very quickly that I'm kind of a dork anyway. If you listen at all to this podcast. Psalm West, if you say it really fast, Psalm West could sound a little bit like Psalmist, which is the, the author of the Psalms. Um, so hey, there you go, Psalmist. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, that was that was terrible. I don't think it's on par with a bad dad joke, but it's bad. Um, anyway, we uh, congratulate them. He's here uh, and he's perfect, is what Kim tweeted or Instagrammed or social media of some sort when he first arrived. There was a picture of him swaddled, lying in his bassinet. Uh, she says he looks that he is Chicago's twin uh, currently, that he will probably, you know, grow out of that and start looking like himself, as babies tend to do. So it will be fun to watch them grow. They have had four kids in fairly rapid succession, I think. Um, I don't think North is that old. I'd have to look it up. I know I just read it when I was reading about them. Um, Shy is one, maybe five, four. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that because I, I will be completely wrong. But anyway, um, Psalm joins his siblings. I didn't see a middle name, so I'm not sure what his middle name might be. If you know it, please share it in comments or on social media. Um, would, would 
be interested to know what his middle name is, but he's here and doing well. So again, that is what counts. We are going to take uh, our first break of the podcast. And when we come back, we will be talking a little bit about some season finales that have happened or are about to happen. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast, and I will be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast, talking about baby names in the first segment, moving on to non-baby news, and that is that it is, well, it used to be this was season finale uh, season, but with streaming and with all the different ways we watch television and uh, TV shows, etc. nowadays, it, it's not quite so much season finale time. Season finales can happen all through the year and now we have mid-season finales and just all sorts of craziness but I want to talk a bit about the recent season finale of The Big Bang Theory and the fact that it had a special guest star on it which is nothing new they've had guest stars throughout the series it's been on for quite a good long run but they had um Sarah Michelle Gellar appear on the season finale of The Big Bang Theory, and that just made me smile and happy. She played herself, and uh, they did manage to keep it uh, fairly well close to the vest, and um, so that she was a surprise when she appeared. She appeared flying to uh, on a plane next to one of the other characters, and ended up being that character's plus one to the Nobel Peace Prize award ceremony, where... Sheldon was receiving a Nobel Prize. Sheldon and, um, I'm so sorry, I can't think of her as anything but Mayim Bialik. Uh, so Sheldon and Mayim were <laughs> receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. That's terrible, I know. That's not her character name. Uh, anyway, there have been numerous references to Buffy the Vampire Slayer throughout the series. So the fact that this character got to bring Sarah Michelle Gellar as his plus one was um, probably... You know, that's definitely a nod to those references. As a huge Buffy fan, this makes my heart happy. Um, and the fact that Sarah Michelle Gellar agreed to come on and play herself and have this cameo. And I, I believe she made a comment of, you know, this, this, this is not a date. She was not going as his date, which is she's playing herself. And um, she in real life is married to Freddie Prinze Jr. They have two children. They seem happy. I'm not, I don't know. I'm, I'm not in their marriage, but uh, yeah, she did. And I, I like that they wrote that in that this was not a date. Thank you very much. Um, but the fact that she was sitting next to him on the plane and, and agreed to be his plus one, I think is very cute and very sweet. And if you watched it, awesome. Um, if you're, you know, if you haven't watched it and I just gave it away, I do apologize. Um, I should have said that. Spoiler alert. It did come out on Thursday, so it's been a few days. And it's been online, etc. So I just realized that I may have uh, given a major spoiler and I apologize. Now, for the next season finale, there will be no spoilers of any kind because it is uh, the season finale of Game of Thrones, which is happening tonight. Not only season finale, but series finale. And I should have said that for Big Bang Theory as well. That was the series finale, not just the season finale. Both of these shows are coming to an end after a good long run. I am not going to give you any spoilers on Game of Thrones because I have not yet started watching season eight. My husband and I are saving them up to binge watch them uh, because there's only, what, six episodes? 
So we're saving them to just plow through and not wait a week between each one. It's been quite the challenge. I've actually managed to stay relatively spoiler free on Game of Thrones. I've seen a few things. Uh, I did see the, um, the Starbucks cup that became a meme, of course, as it does. I've seen a lot of memes that have given me kind of an idea of what maybe has been going on this season, but I haven't read any articles and I, I kind of skip over, skim over the memes. And I have really, actually I have very well behaved friends on social media who have not given away spoilers really um i have one friend on facebook who she's new to the game of thrones she just binge watched the first seven seasons before the eighth one came out and then she's been kind of live facebooking (laughs) um is that the same thing is that is that a thing anyway she's been she was she was doing updates as she was watching these episodes but she makes them very vague but also very specific if that makes sense so like if you were watching the episode her comments would make total sense but at just reading them without having seen the episode they don't really tell me anything so she's very good at that anyway tonight is the series finale of game of thrones there is speculation galore there's been comments uh, throughout this season that the writing has not been as good that the season has not been as good but you know, uh, something that's been on for eight seasons and has had such a major fan following. I can imagine that no matter what direction the writers chose to go, people would not have been happy. That's just the way these things work. Um, apparently, the final the final episode has um, been leaked uh, via text in some ways. Um, it, it's apparently been spoiled by, for many people who have read this or found out about it, um, by a text message circulating on the internet that, um, according to this article, contained several legitimate spoilers for last week's show and an equal number of previews of the finale. So the spoilers first emerged on a Reddit on Reddit in a lengthy post that gave a detailed summation of episode five and next week or tonight's that this is tonight's finale. It was later deleted by moderators, but not before it was copied and widely circulated. That's the thing with the internet. You can't get rid of anything. Um the fact that the post mostly got last week's show plot points correct in advance of the episode airing has many convinced that it is totally accurate. I uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to do any research to find out what this was. I'm sorry. I don't want to know. Um, so if you want to go see, you can find those copied, screenshotted, all that good stuff. But um, come on, people, don't, I don't know. Uh, that I, I kind of get why people do it, but at the same time, it's like, just experience it along with the rest of us. And you don't need to, you don't need to spoil things, but... Uh, this is definitely one of the more eagerly anticipated um, season slash series finale. I do know that people are, um, yeah, I, 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 and people ahead of if ahead of the show are already complaining about it, and it hasn't even aired, and it has you know hasn't ended. But there's been a lot of of complaining that this was supposed to be you know like the climax of the storytelling etc we were supposed to have all of the loose ends tied up and all of that great stuff but um fans i've been reading have been grumbling about like rushed storylines how and i get that you know we there's so many plot lines so many characters in game of thrones so many pieces that have been moving and shifting throughout these seasons that when 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 you're trying to tie things up of course it's going to feel rushed but um people are not terribly happy um they they're not happy with some of the twists and turns that have been taken again i don't know i am excited to find out but at any rate oh there's also that meme that i am one of the 1% of people that have never watched a single episode of game of thrones Okay, cool for you. Um, but lots of people do. And lots of people probably think whatever you're totally into is weird and they don't do it either. So come on, people. Let's all be nice on the internet. Let's all be nice in terms of what we find entertaining. Everyone is different. That's my PSA for this episode. But 
are you going to watch? Are you are you a Game of Thrones fan? Are you excited about the ep- the series finale? Have you been frustrated with season eight? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know on social media what you think, and um, eventually I will get around to binge watching the entire season, and then I too will have opinions. But right now. I just know that it's coming. People, uh, it's coming. Ha <laughs> ha. The series finale is coming. Um, see, I'm a dork. I can't help it. Uh, it is coming. And whether you're ready for it or not, it, it, it's going to be, it's going to be over soon. And then, then let the dissecting begin. We are going to take our second break of the podcast. Uh, when we come back, we'll have some wedding news. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast. Before the break, uh, we were talking about series finales. Uh, I kept saying season finale, but uh, both of those were, in fact, series finales. And as you can see from the title of this episode, the Brides, we are going to talk about some weddings in this segment. As I like to ogle celebrity babies, but not in like a creepy way. I just think they're cute and I'd like to see what their names are. Uh, I also love to look at um, wedding pictures and see dresses and all of those good things. As a kid, I was fascinated with weddings and dresses. And I was even fascinated with like um, historical period wedding dresses. I, you, you show me a wedding dress. I was a happy kid. I had a framed portrait of a Gibson girl bride uh, on my wall for a long time growing up. Yep. I've always been weird and I'm okay with that. Uh, but I have been fascinated with wedding dresses. Uh, and then when I got married, I had a really, really simple dress and I was okay with that too. It was Jersey knit. It didn't wrinkle. I literally rolled it up in my suitcase and, and took it home with me to get married. And that was fabulous. Um, but you know, I grew up in the era of like princess Diana's huge fluffy dress. And then in, I, I was, I'm going to tell you my age. I graduated high school in the nineties and there were some just hugely complicated dresses in the 80s and 90s and just beads and buttons and lace and everything. Um, so I do like to look at pictures of weddings. And as a segue from the last segment, uh, it turns out that Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner uh, got married uh, in kind of a surprise ceremony on May 1st, so fairly recently in Las Vegas, following the Billboard Music Awards, uh, apparently uh, where the Jonas Brothers performed at their first awards show as a band in a decade. I, wow, I didn't realize that it had been that long. Um, clearly, I've been living under a rock. Uh, but the, So they did get married in kind of a surprise ceremony. Um, Joe's brothers, Nick and Kevin, were there as groomsmen. Um, the couple, according to online records, applied for a marriage license earlier in the day uh, in Clark County, Nevada. And the singer and the Game of Thrones star recited vows at the prompting of the Elvis impersonator. Oh, they even had an Elvis impersonator. That is a Vegas wedding. Holding hands and looking into each other's eyes as they said, I promise you I will never leave you. I will love and trust you all the days of my life in sickness and health forever and ever. So congratulations to Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner or, um, you know, uh, Sansa Stark, as uh, people may know her as. 
I also see that Idris Elba got married. This is going to make so many women sad. This was April 26th, so many of you already know this, but as I was just scanning through things, um, Idris, Idris Elba and Sabrina Dowry, D-H-O-W-R-E. I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name. I apologize for that. They got married in Morocco on April 26th at the Sar Char Bog Luxury Hotel in Marrakesh, according to British Vogue. So, oh, Idris, such a beautiful face. And his, his, his bride is beautiful as well. They make a lovely couple. So congratulations to them. I also saw that there was a, uh, I saw it listed as a royal adjacent wedding yesterday in England. Um, and that was Lady Gabriella. Uh, let me get her title straight for you. She's the daughter of Princess Prince Michael and Princess Michael of Kent. And I do want to give you the correct name. She married Thomas Kingston, who is listed as a financier. Um, lots of um, lots of royal sightings in the pictures, if you are interested in that kind of thing. They got married at St. George's Cathedral. It's a beautiful setting. The um, The flowers out front were amazing. Oh my gosh, they were just beautiful. Um, yes, Lady Gabriella's Lady Gabriella Windsor. Um, she was married at St. George's Chapel. The Queen was there. Queen, The Queen and Prince Philip were there. Uh, Harry was there, but not Meghan, which makes sense because she did just give birth and she needs to be home and resting. The um, Andrew and Fergie were there. I don't know if they were there together, but uh, they were there. Um, Beatrice was there, but not Princess Eugenie. We don't know what's going on with that. Uh, it's uh, the, the entire Middleton clan was there. It turns out Pippa is friends with the groom, so they apparently their families are close. So the entire Middleton clan was there except for Kate. William was at an event, but don't know what's going on with Kate. You know, not being in the know on these things. <laughs> yeah, so just it's just interesting to see who was there and who wasn't. I do love to ogle weddings. I, I love to ogle, especially royal weddings, because their bridesmaids are tiny. They have teeny tiny bridesmaids, and they're always so cute, and they're always like... Uh, n being cheeky and running around uh, so i do like to ogle royal weddings her dress is very lacy it's it somehow manages to be um both simple and complicated at the same time very or maybe not complicated maybe intricate it would be a better word but she looks lovely she's wearing the kent tiara as is appropriate since uh, she is the daughter of prince and princess michael of kent and he is the grandson, Prince Michael is the grandson of Edward V, I believe. That's the correct number. Um, yeah, so I one thing that I love about royal weddings, or British weddings, I guess in general, is the hats. The hats and the fascinators, and I, to make another bad joke, find them fascinating. I do love to just go through and look at all of the hats that appear at these functions. Some of them are crazy intricate. Some of them are very simple. Um, the queen was wearing hot pink. Um, um, Princess Anne, I love her outfit. It is uh, it's yellow and blue and very, very Anne, but she's got a great hat. Uh, yeah, I love her outfit. It's, uh, yeah, um, I said that already. <laughs> the queen is wearing a hot pink and it looks like she's got a flowered dress underneath her coat. She's got an amazing collection of coats, but um, so yeah, there was a royal adjacent wedding as I saw it listed, which I think is kind of funny. I, I also love all the pictures um, of these types of weddings where you get to see the back of the, the, the dress and there's the train and the veil. That's what I wanted as a kid. I wanted that 20 foot long train. I wanted a veil that, that was that long. And, um, and then I grew up and I decided I didn't want all of that stuff. And, Part of me kind of thinks, yeah, maybe I should have had. No, I really shouldn't. I'm just not girly enough. And I would have tripped or um, gotten it caught in something. This is why it's a really good thing that I don't have to have a royal wedding. <laughs> not that I would, but <laughs> anyway, ogling of royal wedding pictures, I find to be entertaining. Maybe you do as well, but uh, <laughs> these, these bridesmaids are adorable. One of them is just 
so distracted in all the pictures that I'm seeing. And um, it's very, very fun to watch. So we have a new royal baby. We have a new royal wedding. We have season finales. We have series finales. We have spoilers, except not spoilers, because I haven't seen anything because I live under a rock. We have weddings, celebrity, and otherwise. Well, obviously celebrity since this is entertainment news and it wouldn't make sense for me to tell you about my friend Arda who just got married because you don't know Arda but her wedding was also beautiful and I have been ogling those pictures as well I am a wedding picture ogler that is what you probably didn't think you ever needed to know thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the GSMC entertainment podcast I hope you will join me next time when we will be talking about I don't know because who knows what's going to happen in entertainment news between this episode and the next. So you will just have to tune in to find out. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a great weekend and I will see you. Well, not see you, but um, I'll I'll help you join me next time. (laughs) Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast part of the golden state media concepts podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud and google play just type in gsmc to find all the shows from the golden state media concepts podcast network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.